Hello! It's Richie from Grave Papa. And we got this new record coming out this Friday on Black Doomba Records called Necro Eclosion. Cheeto man. And um, anyway, so I thought I'd do a playthrough of Sights to the Sky, our latest single that came out this last Saturday. And I also got some new picks, courtesy of Intune Guitar Picks. Courtesy. I can't speak, apparently. So, um, I tried a different pick, pick design, pick style, whatever you want to call it. It's those uh, three-sided picks. This thing doesn't focus for shit. So, yeah, there you go. Grand Puffer logo on one side. The other side, I don't know if you can see that. Good lord, it's the Causes artwork that was done by Soul Paralyzed Art. He's a Russian artist. These are in .88 gauge. Now, I've never used these picks before, or at least these three pointed picks before, the jumbos. So yeah, I wanted to kind of show everybody what those are all about. And also do a playthrough of Sights to the Sky. Um, this is a song about Buzz Aldrin. Our bass player Mike, he was, he always thought it'd be cool to have a song that was uh, about him. And so we thought, yeah, let's just, let's do it. And um, I end up, thanks Jenny, I end up writing the, the lyrics for it and um, singing a, I guess, a rough vocal for it. And the reason I did that was because Voivod, um, their guitarist, Dan Mondrain, which he goes by Chewy in Voivod, uh, laid down a guitar solo on this song. So um, we were very fortunate to have Chewy from Voivod do the solo. and. Um, if you guys have heard it, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's just freaking amazing. It's really, really cool. And um, so anyway, I'm going to try this with my new picks. And uh, yeah, here we go. It starts at the 12th fret. And there's a lot of sliding going on. <laughs> I love these picks already. <laughs> I'm a very hard player and I'm kind of all over the place and yeah I think these are gonna work great. So it starts out at the 12th fret and I'm tuned down to dropped B. Every string is down a step and a half and the lowest string is down to give it the uh, old drop B tuning. And so it starts at the 12th fret and slides to an open and then hits two open notes. And then it slides up to the sixth fret. And two more open notes. So it's three, I guess. And then it goes to the 10th fret and slides to the 13th. So it's, I can't even play my own song. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Yeah, I like that riff quite a bit. Turn that up just a hair. Um, I think I just came up with that just jamming one day, just practicing, and you know that's usually the way a lot of the riffs kind of come out. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, it, it rides this riff for quite a while. Uh, so. Can't even remember how many times I play it, but we'll just go through it real quick here. I like 
riffs that move around a lot and I like slides it gives it like weight you know it just gives it this kind of really wobbly kind of you know uh, Tony Iommi is definitely like a huge influence on me and I think that comes out in this so it does that for however many times and then it goes into like this kind of napalm death ish kind of riff and it starts out so it's open four and then two strings down on the third fret and it's going to alternate between those two It's going to move that whole thing up to the seventh position. So. And of course, it sounds really dissonant. Um, so it does that like, a couple times a piece. So what I'm doing is I'm hitting the open and then I'm hammering on with my second finger onto the fourth fret. So it gives it that really ooh, uneasy feeling. And it just keeps going back and forth. Um, and then it goes into the 10th position and it, well, actually it starts at 11. I'm just playing with, you know, my one finger because the first three strings are a root fifth octave. out of tune so it starts and then we're gonna go to the ninth position and it's gonna be the flat and fifth and the octave Tempo and style change comes in. And this is also what sets up Chewy from Voivod um, to play his solo. So what we're doing on this part, it's funny, I wrote this riff not realizing that I kind of used this in a couple of other Grave Huffer songs, namely Chains Around You and Kill for Sport. <laughs> so. It starts out with an open and it hammers on to the fourth fret 
Just playing the top three strings. And we're putting the pinky on the seventh fret on the third string. So we're going. So we're hitting 5th fret, 7th fret, just a root 5th power chord. Like a diminished chord to the 2nd fret. Just root 5th. Kind of a little bit of an 80's rock vibe there, like some like George Lynch or Dokken or something, you know. So that's how that riff goes. It does this about four times. fun riff to play and then after that this is when Chewie comes in and busts the door down with his spacey solo and fucking you know giving it the whole Voivod vibe and so we're, we're shifting keys from uh, E down to B again so we're starting in the fifth position <laughs> Lots of uh, lots of movement, but uh, okay, fifth position. Riff slow actually, uh, but normal speed would be. Shift back to E again. So the way this starts is um, we're in the fourth position. And we're just playing a bar chord, just the first three strings. And since we're on an open B, we can just do it with one hand, one finger. So we're kind of just chugging on that. So what we're doing, it's fourth position, the first, second, and third strings, open B tuning, and I'm putting my third finger on the sixth fret of the first string. So it's, and I'm hammering on it. Next, it's going to go, hey, Victor, what's up, man? My friend Victor from uh, Brazil, he's actually writing a review of Necro Eclosion as we speak, and he was messaging me earlier tonight about his review, and 
clarifying some things about uh, American history and um, this song too, the whole Buzz Aldrin thing. And so it's really cool that you know a reviewer is actually asking the band some clarification on things so he can write an accurate review. How cool is that? Yeah, Solar, man. Yeah, I love Solar. Solar's my jam. I've got three. I've got one more coming on the way. i got an eight string coming. So anyway, yeah, this riff is um, kind of a cool way it, it moves around. So it's the same shape, just moved down one fret. So again, starting at the fourth fret. So what I'm doing there is just basically I'm trying to, you know, Jay's blast beats are coming in at that point. So Just picking like it's it's a it's a bitch. Ugh. I haven't played that in a while, so I'm sucking. Also without drums, it's kind of a bitch. So it does that for four times, I believe. And yeah, if you don't stretch your fingers and your hands to play stuff like this, you will cramp in here <laughs> for the stretches. Especially, like Mike always, it's like, man, you use your pinky. <laughs> Why are you always using your pinky? So, yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> I know, right, Craig? Yeah, uh, I was definitely thinking, like, Scandinavian kind of black metal. You know, I mean... Um, we tried to kind of go into that territory a little bit on this record because I know that new Dark Throne album came out. Um, what was it? Uh, was it Old Cross? Is that the name of it? Um, that came out, and dude, I just love that album. Like I'm, bless you. And <laughs> my wife is uh, having a sneezing fit. And so we were listening, Old Star, sorry, not Old Cross. Well, Mike and I were listening to Old Star like all the time. And so I think that may have rubbed off, uh, uh, the, the black hole and black metal thing was rubbing off on us a little bit. And um, so anyway, that's definitely where that came from. And it, it sneaks in a few other songs too, like Ghost Dance and uh, Causes. And uh, there's a couple other songs I think that have a little hint of that in there, Custom of the Sea. So yeah, um, after it does like the...
Yeah, old Star. Dude, it's like if Dark Throne made a Doom record or something. It's fucking awesome. I love it. It's like Rift City. I love that record. So anyway, <laughs> enough of my Dark Throne freaking worship. Um, but yeah, dude, totally. So um, uh, yeah, every time, yeah, Craig, when we write, what, when we write riffs, um, I don't really ever think about, oh, this is gonna be a bitch to play live. <laughs> it's it's usually when we start playing them live, and then I'm like, ah, oh, shit, man, I don't, um, I don't think. Uh, we were we definitely were not thinking about what the hell we were going to do when we play these songs, you know. A lot of the times we have to learn them again because we were just like writing and then recording. We weren't really like playing the songs, you know, um, live or really rehearsing them much. You know, we didn't have a lot of time to do like pre-production or anything. We just wrote the songs, jammed on them for, you know, a week or so, then fucking recorded them. There were a few instances we wrote the song and recorded it the same day. You know, it was just really spontaneous. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that song's freaking killing me. So yeah, okay, the rest of it. It's, it does more of an arpeggiated thing. how it ends so yeah that song's gonna be a monster <laughs> to play live and um, we are going to hopefully start rehearsing either this Sunday or next I'm not 100% sure maybe next Sunday we've got a um, I think we got an interview this Friday night on the uh, Zach Moon's Zach Moon's man I can't talk tonight the Zach Moonshine show on Metal Devastation Radio, so we're going to do that Friday night. And then Sunday, we're going to get together at our bass player Mike's house, which is where our new rehearsal place is, and we're going to um, have a record numbering party, because the new vinyl is going to come in, and we're going to hand number all the records. And, um, yeah, we might, re we probably will record the rehearsals, Victor. Um, we're already looking at getting a couple of nice, uh, I think they're like PZR mics or whatever, I can't remember what they are exactly, they're these weird like dome shaped mics, like almost like, like a pyramid, and you set them down on the floor, and yeah, they record like really good, so yeah, we're, we're going to do that, run it upstairs to the mixing board and the computer and all that stuff, so anyway, yeah, that's that's the plan, <clears throat> you know, we're going to have our record hand, hand numbering party for the records this Sunday. And, um, so if, it, if you got any of you guys ordered the, um, live, live stream, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, if we live stream, we'll probably do that and then upload it to YouTube the following day. And, um, because we don't have enough subscribers on our YouTube to live stream from there yet. So, anyway, uh, we need like 500 or a thousand or something crap like that. So, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube. Um, so yeah, that'll be the plan going forward, and then, um, we're already writing for our next project. It's going to be a three-part song based on Dante's, and, um, con the Dante's Divine Comedy, uh, Purgatory, Inferno, and Paradise, and <clears throat> it's going to take up, like, one full side of an album, and the other side is going to be... It's a split, and it's going to be a uh, band Murder Van, and they're from, um, thanks, dude, thank you, thanks, Chris, uh, yeah, Chris, sorry, man, I can't see shit, um, we're going to um, do a split with a band called Murder Van from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and they're going to, their theme on the, the split is songs about 
killing people. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're mur that's, that's what they do. And uh, we're really excited about that. And we've already got, oh my God, we probably got about 30 riffs already like laid down. Uh, we just got to kind of put them together and see what works, see what doesn't work. And um, I got a solar seven string that I've been writing this thing with and it's going to be pretty different sounding. So <clears throat> we hope you guys like it and it'll probably come out, I would say this fall, I'm assuming. Uh, Black Doom is going to release it on vinyl as well. So yeah, it's going to be really cool, man. Lots of cool shit going on and hopefully... Um, We'll be playing some shows this year, too. We've already got quite a few booked. We'll see if they stay booked. You know, so... <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to play this song, Sights to the Sky, all the way through. And then I'm going to sign off. So, here we go.
Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you guys watching. I would have went on a little sooner, but, uh, you know, family stuff, you know, stuff just comes up. But anyway, appreciate you all. Cheers. And, uh, oh yeah, I got a, Victor, how was the composition process? Did the ideas come up from you? Well, um, thanks, Christy. <laughs> Comp ideas really, that particular song is, is, is a lot of, of me, I guess. Um, it just depends on the song. Um, like that one, I pretty much wrote all the music for that and the lyrics. <laughs> and I, that was my first lyrical contribution to Grey Puffer. So, um, <clears throat> and then of course, Chewy from Voivod does the solo and then, you know, and Mike and Jay, of course, do their parts and, you know, make it a actual song, you know, if it's just my compositions or Jay's or Mike's, it's just our parts. It's not really Grave Huffer until everybody, you know, puts their parts on there. So yeah, anyway, um, thanks for watching. I'm going to sign off here. I know it's late. Um, you guys have a good rest of your week and stay tuned for Necro Eclosion this Friday on vinyl. Cheers.